<clears throat> Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming live at you again for yet another Film Fanatic video. So, so I hope everyone's doing good. It is uh, Friday at about 9.32. So, yeah, pretty nice day today. I think the weather might be pretty decent the next few days. It was beautiful yesterday, which was Thursday. So it's uh, looking promising. We'll see, you know, if we can. it'd be great to have like a whole week of just killer weather, but we'll see. But yesterday was really nice. And uh, so... Yesterday, um, no, I should say tonight, if anyone's in the Belfast area, we Quantum will be playing tonight at Sophia, which is this uh, super cool bar that opened, um, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so in Belfast. It's a really cool place. I kind of discovered it this past winter. Winter for a few times for, for drinks and a night. And then over the winter time, they were having they start having these music events, and it was uh, really cool. And I, so I kicked around, thinking thinking of the idea of maybe you know doing some kind of a music thing there. And it's kind of, you know, so far worked out, and some of the things kind of lined up. And so tonight we'll we will be playing, uh, with Quantum at Sophia, and it's on uh, 84 Main Street in Belfast, Maine. It's a tiny little place, but super cool bar, very cool vibe, and uh, probably be playing for a couple of hours, two and a half hours or so. We're going to be starting at about 7.30, and so very excited about making our de debut there as a band. So last night, actually, I actually have a jazz group with Mike Whitehead, who plays bass in Quantum also, one of my, you know, closest friends if not my closest friend he we've uh, been playing music together for years and years and years and so we have this other band this jazz group it's kind of gone through these different incarnations over the years but we've had had a jazz group or version of a jazz group for for uh, quite a few years and we played uh last night at sophia uh it was our first first time playing there my first time in general playing at this at this venue and it seemed like it went pretty well and so we'll see how things can go and maybe we'll get some more dates there but i really love that place i, I think it's a very cool place so tonight will be our first time playing with the, with quantum so we'll see how it goes and then also tomorrow which will be saturday at about uh 2 o'clock we will be also doing another quantum show where we're going to be playing on the radio on WRFR on my friend Spencer Roulard show. And I, uh, I really, uh, love working with Spencer. We've done a couple of, we've done about two or three shows together in the past. He, uh, he has a radio show on WRFR and he's had it for, I think maybe a year or two and it's all like electronic music. And then he also does a lot of his own, music on the show he does a lot of this uh, heavy duty kind of modular synth stuff so we did a show on his radio station uh a few months back and it was super fun the only thing that happened that we kind of want wanted to try to do was to record the show so we could maybe have it for prosperity or not prosperity but to have it for promotion you know, something that we can share around, maybe if it comes out, you know, if it's a pretty decent performance or a good performance, we can use it for, for other things. And uh, because Spencer's thing is sound, and so he, he works for a sound company during the day. So we uh, had originally had this idea, but we had some problems with getting the show recorded. So then we were like, oh, let's try it again. So we're going to do it tomorrow, and we're going to you know, hopefully get the show recorded and hopefully we'll do a decent performance. So it's something that we can have, uh, you know, just to use for maybe future releases or, you know, promotional thing, promotional things. Uh, when we first did our show a few months ago on his station, I had had some feedback from some friends that the actual sound quality was, was very good. So we'll see, uh, you know, and, uh, but the main thing is if you're around tonight in good old Belfast, Maine, come on down to uh, 
Sophia. It's a super cool place, and uh, and it's a free show. So so today's show is on is going to be my first film. I do like his work a lot. Some of his stuff can be mixed, but I generally like. Some of his films I love. I really, really love. And that is M. Night Shyamalan. I've never done any of his films. I have I have quite a few of his movies on Blu-ray and DVD. There's maybe only... Maybe one or two that I don't own. I've always been a pretty big fan of his. And it's funny... Because I, I almost feel like more more so with him but or, or more than any other director or film that I've seen, his stuff has kind of grown on me over time. There, you know, there are probably a few situations or a few times I've seen some of his movies and I thought they were okay or they, I don't know, it didn't really resonate with me. I thought it was good or, or I like parts of those films. I've never really seen a film of his that I uh, didn't like, like to the point of where I was just like, "Oh, well, that's you know, that's trash," or "That's that's a pretty forgettable, hot mess." I've never really had that experience with M. Night Shyamalan. I've but it, but it's been unique because I've seen like again I've seen all of his work for the most part, and I've had I've had it happen with a few of his movies where I thought they were pretty good when I saw them. But then over as you, as time has gone by, I've seen them and, you know, quite a few, quite a bit more times. And, and I found myself really enjoying them even more. So it's interesting. One movie in particular that I thought was okay. Remember when it came out, I remember seeing it in the theater back in the day. Um, and that was, um, uh, so, uh, that movie Signs that he directed with uh, Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix. That was a movie I remember seeing. I've, I've seen a lot of his films in the theater. But uh, I remember liking Signs. Like I thought it was pretty good. But then I felt like I had some issues with it. And I, I don't know. I had a few hang-ups about it. I never really uh, fully embraced it. But I liked it. And since then I have really... I, I really enjoy that movie. I really think it's a really great sci-fi movie. I think it's a really, a real, uh, kind of a nail biter of a thriller. Also, it's got a lot of funny, uh, funny aspects. It's got a lot of great humor, and uh, the, the acting is great. The writing is really great. The cinematography is wonderful. I that movie's really grown on me a lot, and I I really, I really like. Love that movie. Now, I saw it uh, maybe a year or two ago after uh, not seeing it for a while. And I had seen it maybe about four or five times before that. And I always kind of thought, oh, it's good. You know, it's it's good. It's solid. But I, it's grown on me to where I really, really, really appreciate that. There's uh, the other film, too, that I had that experience with is Unbreakable. I remember seeing Unbreakable back in the day, and I like that movie. And now I think it's probably... I think that movie is amazing. I think it's kind of a masterpiece. I think it's probably... It might be the best movie, I think, for, for, for uh, from M. Night Shyamalan. I think it might be the greatest film that he's ever done overall. But again, I think there's some that are really good. I really... You know, I've always loved The Sixth Sense. That was one movie with starring Bruce Willis that... I've always loved. I think that movie is a uh, just a really great film. I think that movie, well, when that film came out, that was like his first movie. That was a phenomenon too. That really set. That was one of the highest grossing movies of the time, and I think it's still up there with one of the highest grossing openings ever for a film. That movie captivated people, and it it did for me. It, it totally captivated me. I think that movie is is uh, just an incredible movie. Uh, it's a real point by point you know kind of example of how to shoot and how to um create a really great film that has you know some obviously it does have commercial appeal i don't really think that he necessarily set out to 
become a, a commercially uh, viable director. Uh, but it but it does have a, a Spielberg kind of vibe to it. But it has a lot of other elements, and that's the thing I love about his 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 work. Um, there's another movie also that I that I liked a lot, but I did not. Well, actually, I was not really sure what I thought of it. Uh, I'm trying to think of that movie, and it's a really good horror movie. Oh, that movie is uh, The Visit. That's a really awesome movie. It's a really great horror movie. It's super creepy. It's it's a very um, most of his work. There, uh, most of his films have a pretty large, pretty big budget. This film, The Visit, feels like it's kind of this like smaller kind of indie film, but really great film. Uh, the other movies that I like that I love of his. Unbreakable, like I mentioned, I think is probably my favorite. Over the over time, that movie was kind of revealed that that was going to be part of a trilogy, which it became a trilogy. And Unbreakable came out in 2000, Split, which came out in 2016, and then later Glass, which came out in 2019. It's a trilogy, and it's uh, those movies are just amazing. I love those movies. I have Glass. I oh, know I should say I have split on Blu-ray, which I still haven't watched yet. I need to watch that. The other films I don't have yet, but they're they're just such an awesome movie. They're I think they're it's one of the most they're all just such incredible movies. And, and I kind of think they almost as a trilogy they just get better, and they they give you something new and unique and fresh. And I kind of feel they're almost I mean there's essentially um, superhero. It's a trilogy about these superhero characters. But it's told, the narrative of the story and the way the movie is is, is shot and the, the, the way the story is kind of uh, un, unveiled to the audience, I think it's one of the most unique kind of approaches and storylines that's centered around these superhero characters. It's such a unique movie and it's such a... It messes a little bit with your expectations. It has no resemblance to any other kind of comic book based movies that are out there, you know, particularly with the, you know, 100 million Marvel movies that are out there, as well as all the DC movies. It's a completely unique look uh, and kind of uh, exploration of kind of comic book mythology, which is such a great movie, or, or I should say movies. The other movie of his, which is today's show, which is going to be, which today's show is centered on, is The Village. I, again, I had the same, the same exact relationship with this movie as I did uh, in my other examples of like where I liked his films, or, or I say I liked that movie. I liked the film when I first saw it, but I was like, eh, not 100% sold. I was like, I had some reservations about it. But then, you know, like I said, over time, I it really grew. The, those films really grew on me. You know, it, it, the biggest example prob probably being Signs. Uh, I love it. At a point now where I have it on uh, DVD, but I do want to eventually get that on Blu-ray. I think it's a pretty stunning movie. But the movie for today is. A movie that came out in 2004, and that is The Village. I only have this on DVD, but this is a pretty good copy. Again, this would be a great film to own on Blu-ray, because visually it's a pretty spectacular movie. And I remember seeing this in the theater, and I had that same kind of reaction where I thought it was good. There were certain elements around the film at the time that I really enjoyed, but I, there was some, I don't know, I had these weird reservations around it, and I wasn't sold, I wasn't totally immersed in the movie, I thought it had some moments of greatness, but I wasn't really uh, pulled in, and again, years have gone by since this movie has come out, and I've seen it a few times since then, and I remember watching it probably about a year ago again, 
And I just totally fell in love with this movie. It came out in 2004. What a spectacular cast. Probably one of his greatest uh, ensembles uh, that he's ever put together for a film. Bryce Dallas Howard, Joaquin Phoenix, um, Adrian Brody is fantastic in this. William Hurt just is incredible. Jesse Eisenberg, just such a great movie. Uh, it's it's so highly suspenseful. M Night Shyamalan is kind of known for having these like so called trick endings, but you know. And at one point, he was kind of dismissed by a lot of critics and people that he kind of did this, like, predictable thing where he would try to really pull the rug from pe from under people at the end of each of his film, or any of his films. But I don't really think it's a premeditated thing. I think it, it, it's, it's where the story naturally goes. And he doesn't typically do it. I mean, he does throw... I think he's a filmmaker that does like to play uh into like the psycho the psychology of how we are as people when it comes to say fear and horror and like manipulation say through uh the media or when things you know when there's a sense of fear or and it becomes this universal uh almost like hysteria and people start losing their rational mind uh to differentiate fact from uh from fiction he really i think as a director tackles those kinds of things and superstition superstitious beliefs uh and then also i think too looking at things from removing certain things or ideas that could be part of say otherworldly things uh, maybe even things tied to like the supernatural where he'll expose things that or explore things that are regarded as you know these are arcane um, superstitious uh, views of those things but then he'll look at it also through maybe more of a practical pragmatic scientific lens and he'll ride that line you know it's particularly around a lot of his films are mostly horror based but they deal with some kind of supernatural element so this film is definitely a horror film, but again, it really does a great exploration of talking about fear and hysteria and how people can be caught up in this almost to a degree like a mass hypnosis, you know, in the power of suggestion. But very cool movie. I think, you know, Joaquin Phoenix is easily, you know, he's, of course one of the greatest actors in his generation. And I think this role uh, that he plays in this movie is, is just terrific. And I... This is definitely one of those movies that has grown on me to where I think it's one of his better films. It really... And I think it really... like the I think this the ending for The Village is just so tremendous and it really does go into... Uh, such different territory that you you really don't see it coming at least I didn't and and the other the other interesting thing about this movie and and other movies around his work even though there there are some dramatic kind of plot twists in a lot of his films and a lot of the times especially when you first see it it's you know it's a rather big surprise particularly around like the plot reveal but I find when I watch his films and, and the films that of his that have really grown on me uh, over the years, I, it still has that feeling of excitement, particularly around those plot twists and, and, and where there's a little bit of a bait and switch or there's a little bit of uh, messing with your expectation. It's always... A surprise to me and it's interesting because sometimes that will happen with a movie where you know you've seen it and you love the movie but it might not have that same kind of uh, resonation with you but I still think when when I when I see his films now the, those aspects still are very uh, kind of electrifying and very interesting and I I'm find myself still 
even though I've seen the film and I know what's going to happen, I'm still in, in for the ride. This is a tremendous movie. Um, and again, I, you know, I saw this in the theater and I had a very mixed thing about it, but I've seen it probably four or five times since then. And now I love this movie and I would totally buy this on Blu-ray at some point. The, uh, you know, it's one, I mean, all of his films have a horror element or a supernatural element. I, it feels like this film even has a little bit more of a horror element. It's, you know, it's, and it feels like it could have been shot like in the 70s. It just has this kind of vibe to it. And and, and I think one of the biggest influences on M. Night Shyamalan is obviously Alfred Hitchcock. A lot of his films are, at their core, they're, they're, at the core, I feel a lot of his films are maybe like a combination of a thriller meets a character study melodrama, but all of the the draping and the packaging and the, the aesthetic is horror-based or some kind of supernatural thing. But I think his films are very much, at the core, very, very much focused on characters, which I think is essential to for a movie to have, you know, a long lasting power where, you know, people like me will want to see those films again. So yeah, terrific movie. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. I think um, M. Night Shyamalan gets beaten up a little bit too much by critics and the public, even though he He's still a big force, and he's been doing films for a long time. I think a lot of people don't give him credit. They think that he kind of, you know... Some criticisms I've heard of his work is that people really feel that he's like... You know, he uses the same formula every time. And that he's he's had like, you know, one good movie or two good movies, and he's just kind of tried to milk that. I don't really think so. I think he he really sets out to do something new and unique and fresh... And is not afraid to show his influences. And I think that he's, you know, for what he has done, I think he's definitely one of the better directors. The other thing I think is so terrific about him as a director is all of his work is all original. It's totally original. It's all stuff he's written. And even if it's a movie you don't like, I, I for me as a fan of, of, of film and uh, horror especially, it really... That even if I don't like the movie, it, it gives me uh, a tremendous uh, sense of respect for that, for 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 him, because he's you know everything you see you're seeing on the on the on the screen, for good or bad, is you know a totally original concept from his from his imagination, and you know it's it's a thing that doesn't happen enough. I feel a lot of films and things are based on you know previous works or their remakes or their prequels or their sequels or their this or that but directors that throw their imagination out for the world to see you know when it comes to the the way the film is shot but then the source material I just think that's tremendous you know uh, Christopher Nolan for instance is another one I think you know pretty much all of the work that he does is from his is from his mind his creative mind and whether or not you like certain certain films of his i think that automatically gives i have even more respect for people like that that can pull that off like it's incredible so this is jason dean so thanks again for checking out this channel and we will see you next time peace